Okay, now tuples and sets. A tuple is just like a list, but you can't change the items in it. It's immutable, like a string. Uh, so normally you do a tuple by using parentheses. So this is a tuple and you can mix data types as the different items in the tuple. Uh, it turns out in version 3 plus you can do tuples without the parentheses. The only time you need parentheses is if you're representing the empty tuple. Uh, to show if it's empty, let's set s equal to an empty tuple. And we'll get the length of the tuple. And you'll see it has zero elements. But you can do a tuple, I'll say s is equal to uh, quote a uh, one true string uh, and the value none. So that actually creates a tuple and if I do s it, you can see it's a tuple and it's got all those elements in it. And the reason they uh, they, got, they did it so you don't need the parentheses, you can do a very curious thing. Let's suppose we wanted to assign uh, two things at once. So you put a tuple of variable names on the left and say equal and then a tuple of values on the right and what happens is it creates the X and Y and it assign, does two assignments corresponding to the tuple elements. So if we look at X and we look at Y now they've been assigned 10 and 20. Uh, this is very cool sometimes because you can also return from a method a tuple and, and use it to assign two things returning from the method. And we might run into that later. Okay, so a tuple is like a list, so it has uh, index. Uh, so let's go back to our original, uh, well, let's make a new tuple. And we'll just say one, two, three, four, five. So we'll just make it a bunch of numbers, and we'll say t of, get the third element, and it gets the three. Uh, you can do the, the duplication, so if we have t times 2, we get a new tuple that repeats the original twice. Uh, you can do uh, uh, slice, so we can do two, t slice starting at the third one, going to the fifth one. And so it goes from the third, uh, third in uh, the uh, number f uh, number two index, which is the third element, up to but not including the, the index for five. So that shows you that. And uh, so that's basically what he shows you in the book here as well. Um, now, but if you try to change a tuple, so let's see, we have our tuple S, there it is, and let's try to change uh, the the true defaults. So that's at the 0, 1, 2 index. So we'll say s at 2 is equal to false. And it says uh, tuple object does not support item assignment. That's the same thing we saw with string. So that's uh, really what you need about tuple. Tuples are very efficient, so if you don't need to modify individual elements, you should always use a tuple. So the next thing we're going to look at is a set, and a set is an unordered collection of zero or more immutable data objects. Um, now the thing about a set, it's like sticking things into a bag, but it doesn't allow you to put the same thing in once it's already in there. So everything you put in the set has to be unique to each other. If you try to add something to a set that's already in there, it just doesn't do it. Uh, so sets are a good way of collecting uh, from a, a, a large number of things What's, what are the unique things in it? What are the distinctly unique objects? Uh, so to create a set, sets use curly braces. And uh, so we can make a set uh, equal to, uh, let's see, the number is 100, the number 99, the number 3, and the number 45. And so that becomes a set. So we can print it back out. Uh, so not very exciting yet. The way you add something to a set is with the add operator. So I can say add, uh, so the add method. 
So we say s.add and let's add 99 in again. And you'll see it doesn't really add it. We say s, it, it doesn't put another 99 in there. So that's the difference between a, 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 a list and a set is that it has to be unique. There's also no natural ordering. So when I print a set, you're not guaranteed it's going to be in any particular order. In fact, when you look at how it printed out here, it's different than the order that I created it. Okay. Now sets can have mixed types. So that's what they have the example here. They have faults. They have some float and ints and a string all in the same set. So sets are from math. And the first thing we, we have membership, which works just like list. You can check if something is in the set. So I can check here uh, is 99 in the set. And it says true is 98 in the set. And it says false. Uh, you have the length of the set. So these work just like the other uh, collections. And then we have uh, or, and, and in this actually, the this operator returns a set with all the elements from both sets. Um, so if I have, a, let's do two sets. So I'll do set one is equal to a list of, uh, let's see, Tom, Harry, and Sam. And set two will be uh, like a different gathering of people. And there's going to be Mary, uh, Tom is going to be there uh, from the same group that other ones. And let's see, Sam will be there, uh, and uh, uh, Jackie will be there. Oops, what did I do here? S2 is equal to, oh, let's see, colon, Mary, Tom, Sam, uh, Jackie. There we go. So now we have S1 and S2. And if I say S1 or S2, it combines the two sets. So that's called union. It means you take all the unique things from both sets and you combine them and you get a list of all the names. So if this represented the number of people that had a two, went to two meetings, it gives you the list of all the people that went to two meetings. Uh, and then there's the AND, which is called union. So this finds the people that only went to both meetings. So if they didn't go to both meetings, they won't be listed. So only Sam and Tom went to both meetings in the two sets. There's difference. Uh, I use this a lot. Sometimes I, I send emails out to my students before a class starts. And then I want to send another bunch of emails to students who haven't responded. So I have to track the emails from the people that have responded from the people that from the original list. And that's what difference does. So if we take S2, minus S1, uh, S2, and now remove anyone that's from S1 from S2. So it's going to remove uh, Tom and Sam, and you just have Mary and Jackie left. Uh, it works uh, the other way. If I do S1 minus S2, it's different because you're, you're starting with this group and removing everyone that's in this group. So it removes Tom and Sam, and you only have Harry left. And then you can check if uh, all the elements of the first set are in the second set. So let's try S1 less than S2. So that's going to say, is set S1 a subset of S2? And it's not. So let's make a new set. Uh, S3 is equal to, uh, let's see, Tom. Oops, got the curly brace. Tom, comma, and Sam. And you can see Tom and Sam are part of S2, so they're a subset of S2. So now if we say is S3 less than S2, it should say true. Uh, so that's all the operations on sets. Uh, and you can also do methods. So you have, instead of using the vertical bar, you can use a set union. So this is the union of two sets, the intersection of two sets 
the difference and as a subset these four things are equivalent to uh, these four things here the operators and then we showed you add you can also remove an item from a set you can pop an arbitrary item for a set so for example if you're playing a card game you can put all the cards of someone's uh, of a, a shuffle into a, a set and then you can pop it or randomly pick something from the set or you can pop it or randomly pick something from anything that you want and then you can remove all the elements of a set uh, so that's sets